I've been racing Porsches for over 40 years. And Brumos has got a long tradition of racing 911 based cars. And I've been around for most of that heritage. Rolex always quotes, you know, if you have one ounce of energy left after a 24 hour race, you haven't done your job right. And that's kind of the way I feel, you know, you've got a, you got a job to do, you try as hard as you can to, to win and do the best you can. I'm sitting on is a 917 10. I raced this car in uh, 1973 in the Can Am season. I did pretty good. I was third in the championship behind Donahue and, and Fulmer. So, uh, but it was a huge adjustment coming out of a 300 horsepower 911 getting into a 1,250 pound, uh, you know, prototype was a big jump. But I went about it in the right way and, and uh, Mark Donahue was really very helpful in, in getting me used to this car, so uh, that's the history of this car. The, the 935, which is the car I drove up to the platform today, was Peter Gregg's last uh, championship winning car in 1979. Peter Gregg started racing Porsches with Brumos when he bought the company in 1965 from Jan Brundage, which is where Brumos came from. Uh, he and I drove that car on s several occasions. Peter won the championship, but I was assisting him in, in, the, in the long distance races. So that was that's a pretty important car because that, unlike a lot of the 935s of that generation, that is a, a, pu a pure car. It's exactly the way we took that car from the factory what didn't have any super body work on it. It was just a, a really clean, classic example of what the 935s were, and that car was hugely successful. And then the other car we brought was my 77 winning RSR from Daytona. Uh, that was uh, an interesting car because in 77 was the first introduction of the turbocharged cars, and the turbocharged cars were, in my opinion, were something that was kind of unproven, so I elected to drive one of Peter Gregg's X um, cars. That car was bought by Peter in 1975 and uh, was run by a team that I was really um, pretty, pretty uh, in tune with. We went down to Daytona and, you know, we qualified way at the back of the pack. I mean, it was, it was a nightmare and I was going, what have you, what have you done? just started picking off the cars and the turbocharged cars had problems during the race and we would catch up and it was back and forth. I did an eight hour stint at night with, with that car um, because my co-drivers didn't really like driving at night so I took over the duties and uh, we won the race. And that was the last major race that a normally aspirated car won. Um, these long distance races until uh, Porsche you know, pretty much stopped racing uh, production based cars. So it's cool to have that car in the collection. I work as the chief instructor of the Porsche Sport Driving School up in Birmingham. So I'm always involved in the teaching side of it. And then in our racing team, when I retired out of the driving seat, uh, I took over the, the uh, job of um, taking care of our drivers and assisting them in any way that I could in making their job easier. And I've been down that path before, so I know what they wanted, and I think it was a really good uh, relationship where they could rely on me for my expertise. I would keep them 
on kind of a level, a level playing field, not let things sort of bug their mind. And uh, it's easy to, to tip over a, a racing driver uh, with just a few simple words, you can really get somebody undone. So it was my job not to let that happen, and it worked pretty well. They won the championship in 2011, so uh, they did a great job for us. You know, we, uh, being, you know, in the business of racing and being in the business of, you know, being around cool automobiles all, all the time and all my life, uh, to me, it's just cool. It's hard work, but you're enjoying every single minute of it. And, uh, you know, uh, Rolex always quotes a, a, a quote that I had about, you know, if you have one ounce of energy left after a 24-hour race, you haven't done your job right. And that's kind of the way I feel. You know, you've got a you've got a job to do. You try as hard as you can to, to win and do the best you can, and that's what makes it fun. It's, it beats uh, sitting at a desk from nine to five. I'll tell you.